Hello, welcome to Geomega Virtual Learning. This is lesson three on direct and inverse proportion. And in this lesson, we'll be looking at application and looking at even examples involving three variables. First is to understand the graphical representation of direct and indirect proportion. So this is a direct proportion. This is how the graph looks like. This is a typical indirect proportion. So speed and type is an example. And this is also direct proportion, but this is this quadratic one, and this is the cube one. And this is also direct proportion, but it's uh, nonlinear, let's put it that way. So we're gonna look at examples of these. Pause the video and read the question first. Okay. Raphael can complete a work in five days, working eight hours a day. If he works 10 hours a day, how many days will he take to complete the same work? So this is similar to what we had in lesson one and two, except that this is worded in a very contextual form, real life. So the first thing to do is, you need to understand the question. More hours per day means less days to complete the work because work and days are inverse related because it says that you can co if you spend more hours per day to complete something you end up spending more days because you're putting more uh, hours into it so first is understand that days and hours are inversely related so you can start your formula days equals constant over the hours and this is the first two initial values similar to what we did before replace days and hours with five and eight and work for k multiply both sides by eight so k is 40 so this implicit formula now becomes days is the same equals to 40 divided by hours so now that we know this formula then the second part actually means that when hours is 10 how many days would that be? So replace hours with 10. And days will be equals to four. And it makes sense. Five days, you are working eight hours a day. If you are working 10 hours a day, you will need more days. And now obviously, that's what we've got. So when this kind of question is put to you, it's up to you to really decide whether it's inverse or direct. Let's look at another example. Speed distance time. Below is a table showing distance and time for a train traveling at a constant speed of 50 miles per hour. Find the equation for time in terms of distance and find the missing values. Okay. The first thing you need to understand is the relationship between distance and time. Now, since the train is traveling at a constant speed, the longer the distance, the more time you need to complete the journey because the speed is constant. So the longer the distance, the more time you need. That is direct, direct proportion. So you're going to use direct proportion rule. So you start with direct proportion and always use the first value. You need, if this is not given, 50 miles per hour means every hour you, tra you travel 50 miles. That is why one hour is turning towards 60 minutes. So mind you, one hour is now 60 minutes times a minute so we start the same thing distance is 50 time is 60 work out for k divided by 50 so our actual formula in the explicit form will be t equals 6 over 5 times t or 60 over 5 having known this formula find the missing values for this one, what actually means is this, given the formula t equals 6 over 5d, if you know t to be 48, what will be d? Substitute the value of t, 48, into this, and you solve. You multiply both sides by 5, then you divide by 6. So that's 40, this is a simple equation. How you, you need to learn how to solve your simple equation. So d will be equals to 40 miles, and it makes sense. 
less distance or a shorter distance you need uh, less minutes than previously looking at this one so we have 44 the first one second one what this actually means given this formula if distance is 120 how long would that journey take replace 124 distance t equals 6 over 5 times 120 this is a simple fraction of an amount or quantity then you, you work this out so you're going to have 6 times 24 because 120 divided by 5 is 24 that will give you 144 minutes it makes sense the longer the journey the more time we need to complete the journey as we said before so this is another typical example of contextual question about direct and indirect so this is something you need to understand distance speed here in this particular example is directly related so we have 144 for the last question this example typical exam style this is what we call compound proportion that's where you have more than two variables and they are interdependent let's look at this question a is directly proportional to square root of c and then another variable w is inverse proportional to a q when c is 49 a is 35 when a is 2 w is 16 find the value of w when c is 4 so there's so much in this question go through it step by step so let's try to find a formula for a let's try to find a formula for w separately so we start with the first one so i'm using this says directly proportional so it's a equals k times square root of c and i'm going to use the initial values given for a and c which is this to create my equation and work out k so substitute c and a 49 35 square root of 49 is 7 so 35 will be 7 times k divide both sides by 7 and k is 5 so in an explicit form a equals 5 root c or 5 times square root of c let's call that equation 1 so if we work out for a now let's look at w separately it says inverse proportional to the a cube so w is equal to k over a cube we're going to use these initial values to work out the proportionality coefficient k so we substitute a is 2 w is 16 2 cube is 8 16 equals k over 8 multiply both sides by 8 k is 128 so our formula in an explicit form is w equals 128 over a cube right now you're supposed to find the value of w when we know c you see here there is no c in it but we know a in terms of c this is not a simple term if it were to be a simple term we could have put the simple term into this and work it out but what we can do is that we can use this c value given here to work out what is the value for a and once we know the value of a we can put that value into this and determine w so we're going to use c in equation one replace c with four so a is equal to five times root of four square root of four is two so a will be five times two and a is ten knowing that our a is ten we know we have the a in this formula as well so we're going to put ten into a here to help us work out the value of w so you're going to have 128 over 10 q 10 q is a thousand and w divided by is equal to 128 divided by 1000 so w will be 0 0.128 so this is a typical exam question so we call it compound proportion so take time to go through it again go over this video and make sure you understand the process do it in bits let's look for where we have another direct uh, what do you call it variable that's more than two variables three variable problem Eight men can complete a job in 10 days, working six hours a day. 
express days in terms of men and hours? And B, in how many days will 10 men working for hours a day complete the same job? Let's use the formula to see. First, more hours means fewer days needed to complete a given tax. If you spend more hours, you need fewer days to complete a given tax. So days and hours are inverse related. Also, more men mean fewer days needed to complete a given tax. So if you have more men at, on each particular day to work, then you need fewer days to complete the tax. So these are also inverse related. So you can see days and hours inverse, days and the number of men also inverse. You can now combine these two and form a simple relationship d will be equals to the proportionality coefficient over hours times men because they are both indirectly related to days and use the initial values 10 and 6 10 days and 6 hours to find your k so 10 is for days 6 hours and 8 men so k will be 480. So explicit formula will be d equals 480 over h times m, where h is hours, m is, is the number of men. So this will be the formula, d equals 480 divided by h times m. Now we can use the formula to work out b. Given this formula, men is 10, hours is 4, So which means 4 times 10. And if you divide 480 by 40, you realize that D equals 12. So 10 men working for hours will use, what, 12 days. And it makes sense. 10 men working for hours. Because they are working less hours. So it's, it has affected the more of what days. 8 men were working longer, um, working uh, 6 hours, they use 10 days. But 8 men working less hours would need to use 12 days thank you very much for watching and our last lesson will be the arrow method without going through the expression of coefficient of proportionality that's those who are not very good at using pure algebra there's another way of doing proportionality and that will be our lesson for arrow method thank you very much for watching